Honorable students, today we are going to present before you the methodology of examining a case of a risk drop. Well, as you all know, this sort of a case is going to be kept in the exam as a short case. So it is important that you spend very little time on history taking and concentrate more on examination of the patient to bring out the salient clinical features and then arrive at a diagnosis. Well, what we are presenting before you is a patient who I had the opportunity to treat recently. He was a young man who was riding a motorcycle and he grazed past a blade wire and this created a injury which was inflicted obviously by a sharp object. The initial treatment which was offered to him in the hospital in, in, in view of the lacerated as well as some sort of a maceration which was there in the muscles was simple debridma and wound suturing. Well, he presented to us in this position three weeks later and the important feature which needs to be recorded in all upper extremity cases is that this was the left non-dominant limb or hand of the patient which was involved. Well, if you look at the healed wound from a closer perspective, it is basically a V-shaped wound and it is the scar is slightly puckered which tells us that it is adherent to the underlying muscle and there is a possibility that the underlying muscle was also injured because the radial nerve in this location is pretty deep in the intermuscular planes. With this, the first thing which you need to assess is that the attitude of the patient is one of wrist drop and this amounts to loss of active wrist and digital extension. So the first and foremost command that you need to give to the patient is to try and dorsiflex the wrist. And here you see that in spite of best of his efforts, he is unable to dorsiflex the wrist. And this is what is characteristic of a wrist drop. Well, what you can also try and do is, especially in those cases which are presenting late, maybe a year later or so, that you must see whether passive extension of the wrist and digits is possible possible or not and in all those cases where there is a long standing deformity there is a possibility of a contracture developing which you must make a note of. Along with this predominantly examination of the wrist drop is a neurological examination which is sequentially performed based on the sequential distribution of nerve supply to the group of muscles on the dorsal aspect of the forearm supplied by the radial nerve. Well, if you look at the peculiar anatomy of the radial nerve, it has a peculiarity that it supplies the muscle much before uh, the branch to the well it is important to note that the radial nerve has a peculiarity that the branch to the muscle which is being supplied is given off much proximally than the muscle itself and for this very reason usually the triceps brachii is spared and this, in this particular patient, the wound was somewhere at the junction of the proximal two-thirds and the distal one-third, 
and the triceps brachii was found to be normal. So we are now embarking upon testing the muscles supplied by the radial nerve primarily on the dorsal aspect of the forearm. So the first index muscle which needs to be tested is the brachioradialis muscle and needless to say it, the first examination should be performed on the normal side on the normal side so that the patient understands what is required of him so we ask the patient to flex the elbow and it is important to position the forearm in the mid prone position because by your knowledge of anatomy you would recall that brachioradialis is the flexor of the elbow in mid prone position otherwise the prime flexor of the elbow is the biceps aided by the brachialis so in the mid prone forearm position we ask the patient to actively flex the normal elbow and this is the muscle which has been pointed with the arrow yellow arrow is the one which is the brachioradialis you can see again and since this is the normal side the examiner is giving resistance also at the same time well the same procedure can now be tested on the affected side and by giving a command to the patient with after holding the forearm in the mid prone position to flex the elbow you notice that there is no activity of the brachioradialis muscle in this patient you can see again once more and we do not find a similar standing out contraction of the brachioradialis muscle well once you have this sort of a situation where there is no visible contraction of the muscle the examination should not stop here because we need to palpate the muscle belly before we declare that it is grade zero in power that means no muscle contraction is being felt in these cases so the next maneuver would be you palpate the muscle belly with the pronated hand forearm you can palpate the pronated hand with the pronated hand and this is how when you ask the patient to initiate elbow flexion you can follow up the contraction trying to palpate whether there is any contraction in the muscle fibers in this particular patient there was none so it was pronounced brachioradialis is grade zero in power well the next group of muscles which is to be tested is the wrist extensors again first test it on the normal side and this is how the patient actively dorsiflexes and then you can apply resistance to grade the muscle as normal again it is important to underscore at this stage that extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis are the radial extensors of the wrist and the extensor carpi ulnaris happens to be the ulnar extension of the wrist well it is not possible to individually test the extensor carpi radius longus and brevis and in all those cases where the radial nerve is damaged distal to the elbow there is a possibility that the extensor carpi radialis brevis may be saved because it may be supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve and in, this, in these cases there is a typical radial 
deviation of the wrist. Well, with this knowledge, we embark upon now testing the normal side of the, the, the affected side in this particular patient. And when you ask him to dorsiflex, he is not able to dorsiflex. But at the same time, you do get an impression that there is some activity in the dorsiflexes. Please note again in the video, there is an initial impression that there is some dorsiflexion coming. Beware of this trick movement. Again, to revise or to re-emphasize analysis of movement is not analysis of motor power. This must be remembered by the candidates. So what is happening in this particular patient is if you look at the sequence of events which is occurring in this patient, watch the video again. This patient flexes the fingers first and then tries to extend the wrist and here what he is doing is he is using the tenodesis effect of the long extensors or the extensor digital on communis which come into play the moment he flexes the, the fingers. So this trick movement should be detected or should be understood by the candidate and it should not be construed as some amount of power is remaining in the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. And once this sort of a situation occurs, you can cross check. Well, once such a situation arises, uh, you can follow the same dictum that you need to palpate the muscle belly in the proximal dorsal aspect of the forearm to declare the muscles as grade zero, just in case you cannot palpate any contraction in the extensors of the wrist.